Hi everybody, my name is Dusan and I'm the head roaster at Goat Story. And today we're gonna talk about the basics. What is coffee actually? I mean, we juggle with the world every day, but it actually has several meanings. You know, this is coffee, this is coffee, this is coffee, and this is coffee as well. So we're gonna go through all three or four iterations of coffee. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually the coffee plant. I mean, even though many talk about the coffee tree, it's actually a shrub. It's part of the genus Coffea, and there are over 100 different species uh, that are known to scientists. But we mostly use, for commercial use, two of them. One is coffee arabica, the other is coffee canefora, and many of you know it as coffee robusta. Robusta is only one of the canefora varietals, and uh, it's the most common, so that's why we interchange the name canefora and robusta. While in specialty coffee, Arabica is actually the proper coffee that we use. And there's a good reason for that, because Arabica is a far more complex plant that has 44 chromosomes, while Robusta only has 22. But there's a downside to that, as Arabica needs a bit more attention to grow. It usually grows at higher altitudes and in the shade, while Robusta is, as the name already says, it's a robust plant that can survive really, really harsh conditions. Uh, it can take a lot of sunshine, it can take a lot of heat, but one thing that both these plants have in common is that, is that once a year, or even twice a year in some areas of the world, these beautiful blossoms uh, grow on these trees. Why They are white, white flowers, it's called, called the coffee flower, and after they die out, in this place, little red cherries, we call them coffee cherries, grow. Well, I really don't know why we call these little things beans, because they are actually seeds from the coffee cherry. But nevertheless, the whole world calls them coffee beans, and let's stick to that. So, ripe coffee cherries are usually dark red, and we do know some varieties that are orange, yellow, or purple, but on specialty coffee farms, only ripe cherries are picked, and unripe are, are left to ripen more. So that gives a peak quality of the coffee. It's much like picking apples. I mean, you won't pick an unripe apple because it will be, it'll be sour, it won't, be, it won't taste good. It's the same with coffee. Let's take a look at what a coffee cherry actually looks like. It's not a cherry like the fruit that you know. It actually, ha actually has a bit of more complex structure and also it doesn't taste really good as a cherry. So actually the coffee cherry is, the most part of it are actually two coffee seeds, we call them coffee beans, that are opposed to each other and they are protected. The first, the first protection of the seed is the silver skin. It's actually a little, little, little skin that you, that you also find on roasted coffee and uh, those are, that's the chaff that uh, sometimes falls off during uh, grinding and roasting. Then you have the parchment. This is the main protective layer of the coffee seed. It's called parchment because it, uh, when it's dried, it actually looks a bit like parchment paper. And then comes the juicy part. First you have a little bit of pectin. Uh, that's sort of a sugary acid that uh, it's actually used in cooking a lot. And then you have the mucilage or the pulp. And then you have, then you have the skin of the cherry. So the two seeds in the cherry are actually really well protected. And on the other hand, the mucilage or the pulp and the pectin actually can give a lot of taste to the, uh, to the coffee seed. And this leads, uh, leads us to processing of uh, coffee because you need to get these two coffee seeds out of the cherry before you can start, before you can start processing or roasting, and roasting it. And we have, I mean, we'll explain this in another video in more detail, but in its core, we have two different uh, processing methods. One is natural, also called the dry method, and the other is a washed, also called the wet method. The natural, the natural process actually goes like this. You, you pick the cherries and you lay them out on a sort of raised bed or whatever, and you dry the coffee seeds uh, when they're still inside the coffee cherry. On the other hand, the washed process means that uh, on the farm, uh, first of all, they depulp the, uh, the coffee cherries, so they get the, the coffee seeds out of the cherry and they sort of wash them down with water, that's why it's called the wet process, and then they dry the coffee beans uh, on raised beds without the coffee cherry. Okay, so coffee, coffee processing is uh, actually quite a complex process and we'll dig, uh, dig into that in another video. But the thing is, after the coffee seeds or coffee beans are dried, it's time to roast them. I mean, okay, there's a lot of logistics for the coffee, uh, for the coffee to arrive from, from the farm to the roastery. But the thing is, if you want to enjoy coffee, 
uh, you need to roast it. I mean, green coffee doesn't really taste really nice. It doesn't smell really nice. Uh, so you have to roast it. We use a coffee roasting machine. There are big chunks of steel with heaters. And during uh, the roasting of coffee, a lot of chemical transformations uh, happen inside the coffee bean. And we will also explain that in a separate video where we dig into roasting. But for now, what's important is you can only drink roasted coffee. I mean, unless you're a masochist and uh, enjoy green coffee. Okay, so after the coffee is roasted, uh, this is when the, when the fun begins for all of you. Uh, you need to grind the coffee and after that you come to the brewing of coffee. So there are a lot of brewing methods uh, around the world, developed around the world. And we'll explain a little bit about each one. We'll explain uh, different brewing methods in another video uh, in detail. But let's go back to the past. I mean, when coffee was discovered, when they actually learned that if you roast it, it can taste really nice. Uh, the first thing people would do is actually crush the coffee beans, soak them in hot water, and there you go. It's the simplest cup of coffee that you can enjoy. But after the Industrial Revolution and the development of materials, people started to complicate things. And now we have a lot of different brewing methods. So let's let's dig into a few of the most common brewing methods. Okay, so the first method I'd like to mention is uh, filter coffee. Uh, there are two ways actually to prepare filter coffee. One is automated. You have electric machines that uh, make filter coffee. But what we like to do, and it also brings out the most flavor from your coffee, is actually uh, manual filter coffee, also called pour over. Uh, we use Gina. This is a device we developed uh, for making pour over in our company. So the next thing is uh, immersion coffee. Uh, this is actually the closest to what I was explaining uh, before, what people used to do in the past. So actually you put uh, ground coffee in hot water, but with uh, a little bit of technolo technology addition, we now have a, a filter to filter out the, uh, the remains of the coffee from the, from the brew. This is called the French press. So the next thing is actually a variation of immersion coffee. It's called cold brew. So this is actually cold extraction of coffee. It takes a longer time. It takes uh, from 12 to 24 hours, what have you. And you actually soak the coffee beans in cold water. We actually developed a super simple, uh, super simple, super simple coffee, uh, cold, cold brew coffee brewer in Goat Story. It's called the cold brew kit. We actually packed our in-house roasted coffee in these little uh, filter bags. So you just put them in this cold brew kit, pour uh, cold water over it and leave it to rest. So the cold brew is quite popular uh, in the last few years in the world because it's a uh, really smooth and, uh, and tasty coffee. People love it. Then the next method, method I'd like to mention, it, it's a method with a lot of tradition involved. It's called uh, Ibrik. I mean, Ibrik is, uh, Ibrik is actually the device, the pot that is used to make this coffee. It has several iterations of the name. It's Turkish coffee, Greek coffee, Arab coffee. But the bottom line, the method is the same, uh, except different nations call it uh, different names. Uh, the point is you use really, really finely uh, ground coffee. It's close to coffee dust and you put it on a stove top and you bring it, bring it almost to a boil. So it's a really quick extraction and really, really aromatic coffee. So the, the, next, uh, the next method is really, really popular in Italy and it actually spread around uh, the world uh, quite intensely. It's kind of a mimic of an espresso and it's called a mocha pot. Uh, it's actually a stove, to a stove top coffee maker. You put water, water in here and then you got a little, a little coffee filter in the, in, in the middle, like this. This is where you put the coffee, water goes up and you get a tasty beverage in here. And uh, the last method I would like to mention is actually the espresso. Okay, so this is a brewing method that, uh, that became very popular in the 20th century. It's called espresso. It's actually a way of uh, forcing water through coffee grounds uh, to create a really short and really powerful drink called espresso. You can find it in practically any coffee shop in the world. 
Okay, so bottom line, there are a lot of different brewing methods out, uh, out there in the world. I mean, you have siphon, you have Vietnamese coffee, you have different, I mean, you have numerous types of uh, pour over coffee makers and don't even get me started on <laughs> different types of espresso, espresso machines. But the point is, each and every one creates a wonderful, wonderful, flavorful, tasty beverage that's called coffee. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, first video in our, in our series and enjoy a good cup of coffee. Cheers.